little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Hallelujah. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine all the time. Let it shine. Oh, yeah. Beautiful song. And I love my kids and your kids singing that song. And you know what message we send in to the kids? This little light of mine, this light that I have here, I'm going to let it shine, guys. But sometimes it just gets hard to keep the light shining. So I want you, I want you to take your heart and listen to the lesson. You might need this lesson. You might know somebody that needs to hear this. You might, you might know a Christian that is he's having a hard time right now keeping that light shining. We're going to go to the book of Joshua. And in the book of Joshua, chapter 1, God tells Joshua three times, be strong and courageous. Joshua, it is not just enough to be strong. We can be strong, but not courageous. You gain that strength in the Lord. Joshua, you know me. And I want you to take that strength that I'm giving to you. You know who I am. And I want you to use it. Before God tells on the first chapter of Joshua, three times to Joshua, Moses already told Joshua two times, be strong. He's about ready to go home with the Lord. And he tells Joshua, Joshua, be strong and courageous. This is Moses. Moses who walked with the Lord. Moses who obeyed the Lord. Moses who guided the people of the Lord. Moses who talked to the Lord. And he's telling Joshua, you're going to need to be strong and you're going to need to be courageous. What a great message we can send our kids through our life. What a great message we can send the church through our example, telling them be strong and be courageous. It's going to be time, church. I know some of you are there. Some of you have been there. I know all of us have been there. It's going to be time that Satan is going to try to finish, to take out to destroy that light that we have of God in our hearts. And we have to remember, be strong and courageous. We have to remember something in our life. We have to remember that we are part of God's plan. And I know a lot of times I want God to be part of my plan. Sometimes I tell God, God, this is what I need, this is what I want, nothing wrong with that. But I have to remember, I am part of God's plan. I'm going to trust in my Lord. And I don't know about you, but there's so many times in my life that I have a plan and it goes a different way. And you know, I don't know if I'm the only one. But man, I pray to the Lord, I, I need this, I need this, I need this. And the Lord said, no, you need that. And I don't like it. I don't like it. But that's when I remember I had to be strong. I had to be courageous. I had to trust in my Lord, because his plan is way better than my plan, even when I don't see it that way. His plan is better than my plan. You have uh, Moses, and I was said that you have Moses living in the palace of Pharaoh. And Moses said, I'm ready to, to liberate my people. I'm ready to give them freedom. I'm the king of Egypt. I have knowledge. I have money. I have power. I can do it. And what God said, nope, that's not my plan. I'm going to send you outside, and you're going to live for 40 years. You're going to learn a new way of life. It's going to be hard. You're going to learn a new way of life. Then Moses is in the desert, and he learns he has a wife, he has kids, and then the Lord said, now you're ready. And Moses said, ready for what? Come on, God, I already have a career, I have my my 401k, I'm ready to retire. And you're telling me I have to go back to Egypt? And the Lord said, now, now it's my plan. 
Now, Moses, I'm going to show you that it's because of me. Not because of what you know, not because of the power that you have, not because of the money that you have, not because you think you can do it. I'm going to show you it because I can do it. I can do it. And Moses learned, church, through all his life. And now Moses is ready to go home. And Moses is telling Joshua, you follow me. You have seen the Lord. Now it's your turn to be strong and courageous. Go with me to the book of Joshua, chapter 1. Look what it says. Chapter 1 of the book of Joshua. Verse 6. Be strong and courageous, for you shall give these people possession of the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Seven, only be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, so that you may be have success wherever you go. Verse 9. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not tremble or be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Three times. Here's Joshua, ready to lead the people. <laughs> he has seen Moses. He has seen the Lord. He has seen the miracles. And the Lord says, be strong and courageous. It's going to be a hard way, Joshua. But I am with you. You're going to fulfill my promise. Church, we have to remember that every day in our life. We have to remember that every time that we wake up and we're ready to go to work. And we should pray to the Lord. And this is what I do every morning. Four in the morning, Lord, open the door so somebody can hear your news, the gospel today. We have to remember this when we're going to school, kids. And we have to pray to the Lord and tell the Lord, give me the strength, the courage, so I can be the difference in this school. Moms, every day, every morning that you wake up with the kids, those that are homeschooling, beginning the day with a prayer. Lord, give me the strength, give me the courage so I can guide my kids, my family, the way you want us to guide. Because Satan's not going to like that, church. But we have to be strong and courageous. Here's Joshua, and the first thing that God told him, be strong and courageous because you're going to fulfill my promise. The land, the land that I promised to your fathers, you're going to conquer it. But you have to be strong and courageous. You see, in our life, the Lord has telling us, Matthew 28, go through all the world and do what? Teach to everyone, baptizing them. Make disciples. Make disciples. This beautiful creation, this beautiful world that the Lord made back in Genesis 1, it was perfect. God said it's very good, but something happened. Sin happened. Sin happened. And the Lord has telling us, the Lord has told us, be strong and courageous. I'm sending you. I'm sending you so you can preach the gospel. I'm sending you so you can tell the people that they need the Lord. They're not going to like it, but I am with you. They're not, sometimes they're not going to smile back at you and say, yeah, you're right, but I am with you. The only thing that separates us from God is sin, sin in our life. If we live a life of sin, we cannot have communion with God. And the only one that can break down, take apart, destroy those walls is Jesus Christ. Church, do we know Jesus Christ? we know his will. Be strong and courageous. That's what Moses is telling Joshua. That's what God is telling Joshua. You know me. So take strength and courage and guide my people. Parents, take strength and courage and guide your kids. That's what the Lord wants us to do. You see, Jesus, Jesus knew the Lord. Uh, I'm sorry, Joshua knew the Lord. Joshua knew God. He knew what God has done in Egypt. He knew what God has done in the Red Sea. He knew what God has done 
through 40 years through the desert waiting for the promised land. He was learning. We're learning. We're going through hard times. Life sometimes gets hard. But that's when we have to be strong and courageous. And I pray, I pray that when we're getting ready to go home, church, we can tell the next generation, be strong and courageous, just like we did. So again, if you know somebody, if you're going through hard times right now, keep this message in your heart and tell them, be strong and courageous. Because that's what the Lord has told us, be strong and courageous. So do we need the Lord? Of course we need the Lord. What are we going to do with this light? We see in this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. What are we going to do when we're at work and somebody is making an appropriate joke? What are we going to do when somebody invites us to watch a movie that we don't supposed to watch? In the morning, Anthony was saying, okay, so if my kids aren't allowed to watch this, why am I allowed to watch it? If my kids aren't allowed to speak this way, why am I allowed to speak this way? Does that mean when my kids are older, they can do it? We're going to keep it shining. We're going to keep it shining. We should never be mature enough to watch movies that we don't supposed to watch. We should never be mature enough to speak a language that we don't supposed to speak. We should never be mature to say sin is okay. We should never be mature to do that. Because just like Joshua was commanded, you're going to take over this land. We're commanded to go through all the nations. We commanded to go through our neighbors and be the different. We commanded to go through our coworkers and be the different. We commanded to go through other Christian families and be the different. We commanded to be holy, just like he is holy. You see, sin has corrupted perfect creation of God. But we are the difference. We are in the world, but we know are from the world. That was the prayer of our Jesus Christ. I don't ask you, Father, to, keep, to take him away from the world, because the world needs Christian church. I'm not asking you to take him away, but I'm asking you to keep them apart. I'm asking you to make them holy. I'm asking you to give them strength and courage and they know you and they can become with that relationship, perfect relationship with the Father and the Son so we can be confident, church, and we can go and preach the gospel. And if people say, no, we know they're rejecting Jesus Christ. And we know that it's not about us. It's about him. It's not about us having whatever we want in this world. It's not about us making the most that we can for our own benefit. It's about us making the best that we can for his glory and honor. And if he blesses us with a lot, praise God. If he doesn't bless us with a lot, praise God. But one promise, one promise is in the Bible. I will take care of you. Do you see the little birds out there? Who feeds them? Who clothes them? Who takes care of them? Aren't you worth more than them? The Lord died for us. Do you really believe he's going to take care of you? We should, because he will. And that's what he's saying. You know me, you have to know me, so you can know that strength and courage are coming from the Lord. And we're not going to hesitate to speak out for his name. We shouldn't. 1 John 4.16 Look what 1 John 4.16 says. <clears throat> we have come to know and have believed the love which God has for us. We, we have come to know and believe the love that God has for us. Do we know the love that God has for us? We should. Every week, every Sunday, we remember our Jesus Christ on the cross. Every Sunday, we remember he died for us. And we believe. God is love. And the one who abides in love 
abides in God and God abides in him. What a beautiful verse. God is love and the one who abides in him, in God, in love, God is also in him. Church, do we really believe what Genesis 1-1 says? I always bring this Bible verse because I love it. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Do we really believe that? Just think about that verse. In the beginning, God created everything. In the beginning, there was nothing. If we really think about that, you're going to see who our God is, a God that created everything. Everything is God. And when this verse says, 1 John 4, 16, whoever abides in love in God, God abides in him, the creator of everything abides in me. My creator abides in me. So tell me, church, who can be against me if I am with God and God is in me? Nobody can be against me if I believe, if I know his love. And when hard things happen in this life, I still know God is in control. And why? Because 1 John 3, 1, it says that we are called children of God. Children of God. Be strong and courageous, Joshua. Be strong and courageous, church, because you are children of God. And the Father is in control of everything. Our God, you are from God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. First John 4, 4. Greater is he who is in you. Again, every morning, please remember this. Greater is the one who is with you. Greater is the one who you come and praise his name every Sunday, every Wednesday, every time that you are with the church, every time that you are praising God with your family at home, every time that you open the Bible, every time that you are singing to the Lord, every time that you are praying to the Lord, he is greater than the world. He is greater than everything else. And if I am in him and he is in me, who else? is greater than that. Our God will take care of us, church. Do we believe that? Do we live that? Do we show that in our life, in our actions, in our words, in what we watching, what we listening to, our behavior? Do we believe that when God opens the door and we have the opportunity to preach to God, to, to people about God? That should be a lifestyle. Christianity is a lifestyle. It's not just coming on Sundays praising our God. Christianity should be reflecting our God every second in our life. We're going to fail. But we should try day by day to do better and better and better. To do that. You see, there's a story of a, um, a sailor and a captain. They got, they got lost in the ocean. And the captain was really, really, really worried. He like, nobody knows where we are, and we're going to die, and I don't know what's going to happen. And the sailor was just singing praises to God. And the captain said, so aren't you worried? We, we're, not, we're not able to communicate to our superior. And he said, well, my superior already knows. I already prayed to my God. That should be us. Our superior, our God, our Father, we should pray to him. And he will take care of us. And remember, our purpose in this life is to praise him. Praise the Lord. Then God told Joshua, be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Go out with me. Go back with me to Joshua. And look what it says. Joshua chapter 1. 
Now chapter 7, verse 7, I'm sorry, chapter 1, verse 7. Only be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left so that you may have success wherever you go. See, it's not, sometimes it's not easy. It's not easy to, to bring the light to the world. It's not easy to bring this. And it's not easy because sin, I don't know if you notice, but I'm the only one, sin has been changing society. And society is accepting sin as a normal. And when you go and talk to somebody about God's will, they go and do the sin better than the will of God. And they, and they, um, and they tell you, I, t- I have friends that they tell you, well, that was 50 years ago, but today is different. Today we accept that. 50 years ago probably was wrong, but today society says it's okay. And they tell me, so why do, you, why do you believe in the Bible? Why do you believe in a book that is 2,000 years old? That's why they tell me, I'm like, well, first of all, it's not 2,000 years old, but why do you believe in a book that is that old? How can you accept a book to dictate what you do day by day? And I tell them, because it doesn't change. It does not change, friends. It does not change, church. This book is the same here. It's the same in Russia, it's the same in China, it's the same in Mexico. It does not change. The will of God does not change in our life. And the will of God is what we're, what's going to give us purpose in this life. It was going to take us home, and it's what is going to give us purpose and be fulfilled in this life. And when we understand that, that is the will of God in our life, it's his purpose in our life, we will find joy in our life. We might not be happy all the time. Sometimes we're going to be sad. But we're going to be joyful. And this is the way I explain to them. Have you seen a, your favorite movie? You have a favorite movie that you've seen more than one time. You already know what's going to happen. So you know, and, this, and I know my wife does this, you know that at this part of the movie, you're going to be crying. You already know that. You already know what the scene is going to be about. Somebody's going to die that is really good, and you're going to be crying. And then in the next 10 minutes, you're going to be laughing. So you already know that. But you also know how it's going to end. You see, for Christians, we know the end of our movie. I don't know where I'm going to be crying. I don't know where I'm going to be happy in this life. I don't know where I'm going to be through all these emotions. But I know for sure that at the end of my life, I'm going to go to heaven. And that church brings me joy. That's joy. It's when you know the end of the movie. When you know that God already won. And I'm part of the winning team. No, because of what I do. No, because of my strength. No, because of my courage. But because of what he did when he died on that cross. So when the Lord tells Joshua, obey my law. Church, the Lord is still asking us the same. Obey me. Keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. First of all, to, to do that, we got to read this. We got to learn his commandments. We got to learn what he wants from us. I cannot just go home and put it on my table and grab it the next Sunday that I come to church. I have to read it. If I want to worship my Lord, if I want to do his will, if I want the best for me, for my family, for my neighbors, for my friends, if I want to know who the Lord is, I got to read this. Sure, that that means I have to turn off the TV sometime and, and skip that movie and read the Bible. That means I have to stop playing the video games and read my Bible. That means this is my priority, number one, for me and for my family. I don't know about you, but I want my kids to go to heaven. And church, my kids coming on Sundays only to listen to Mark, 
every Sunday morning, that's not going to do it. Because they're looking at me. I am the, the father. I am the dad. And they're watching me every day. They're watching what I'm doing. And that brings me to the next point. When the Lord asks us to obey his law, you know what requires that? And we talk about it this morning. Being holy. The Lord said, be holy because I am holy. You see, sometimes, sometimes I tell Hema, Hema, do this. And she said, I don't want to. I don't know if my daughter is the only one that says that, but man. And my response is always the same. Hema tells me, am I asking you or I'm telling you? Am I giving you the option to do it or not do it, or I'm telling you to do it? And she tells me, you're telling me. I'm like, okay, there's no other option. You do it. When the Lord tells us, be holy because I am holy, church, he's not telling us, if you want to, you can be holy. If not, don't worry about it. No, he's telling us, be holy because I am holy. Now my next question is, how do I know how to be holy? Church, again, you got to read it. The Lord said, be holy because I am holy. Do you know how Jesus lived when he was living on this earth? If you don't, please start reading the gospel and imitate Jesus, the only perfect holy man who lived on this earth and ever going to live. Do you know who God is? Start reading this. You will learn what holiness means. And, and when we understand that, when we understand that, you're going to learn that I'm not going to define. I cannot define. I'm not allowed to define. The Lord hasn't given me that option to define what holiness means in my life. He already told me what holiness means, and I have to follow it. And again, he's not giving me the option. And it's easy. It's easy. I, uh, I know you already heard this, but I'm going to remind you. If the Lord, if Jesus was with you, next to you, would you take him to the places that you go? Would you be watching the movie that you watch? Would you be talking the way you talk? Would you be doing what you do? And if your answer is yes, keep doing it. If your answer is no, change it. Because Jesus is with you every day. Remember, he lives in your heart. He is with you. He abides with you. So would you do that? Would you do that if physically he was there? Well, not physically, but he is there. And please, keep reading this so you learn what holiness means. And follow it. Follow it, church. You see, holiness must be everywhere, everywhere in our life, everywhere. It should be in our homes. It should be at our work. It should be at school. It should be when we're teaching. It should be when we're preaching. It should be when we're talking. It should be when we're with friends, coworkers, places that we go, things that we're going to watch, what we're going to listen to. Holiness is a lifestyle, church. We cannot pick where we're going to be holy and where we're not going to be holy. We have to live that way. Jesus never picked where to be holy and where not to be holy. And when he said, be holy like I am holy, be holy like Jesus was holy. That's the way he lived. 1 John 3, 1, he says, the world does not like you. Church, the world's not going to like us. I can assure you, most of the world is not going to like us when you are holy. And he says, because they do not know him. They don't know the Lord. So they don't know you. You're not living the lifestyle that they are living. And they don't like it. Because light will always, always uncover darkness. Again, light will always uncover darkness. And you know why? Because this is God's world. This is God's creation. Everything that we have is God's. 
So this is the truth. So just think about this. When people from the world are talking about Christians, and it's not true what they're saying, it's not going to hurt. It shouldn't hurt. Because it's a lie. It's not true. But when you're talking about the sin of the world, when you're talking about what they're accepting and it's not right, when you're talking about what is not God's will in their life, they get upset. They don't like it. And why? Because they know it's wrong. Because God created light. It's not my truth. It's God's truth. But they have to know. They have to know. Because God, Christ, Jesus died for them just like he died for us. We have to remember we have to remember that when we, uh, when we talk to people, church, we have to talk to them because we want them to come to heaven with us. We're not talking to them because we hate them. We're not talking to them because we just want to prove them that they're wrong. We're talking to them because God loves them. And we were in that place at one point in our life. And we didn't like it. So when you approach somebody be strong and courageous, and remember, we want them to go to heaven. Church, I have family uh, members. I have brothers and sisters that they're not in the church. Every time that I have the opportunity, I talk to them about the Lord. I talk to them about the love that God has for them. Because I don't want them to go to a place without love, without God, for eternity. So I'd rather have them be upset at me but listen to the truth than not talking and being condemned forever. Remember that. You never know. Re remember that when you're doing it, it's not you doing it. It's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is going to do the difference. But we have to speak out. We do. And you never know what God's plans are for them. That's our only mission. Go to all the world preaching the gospel. Preach. Preach the gospel. And leave the rest for God. Maybe God's going to send somebody be on after you to finish that. And maybe it's not going to be tomorrow. But you know what? Plant the seed. Plant the seed. Again, I'd rather have them being upset at me all this life. But if at the end they repent and they go to heaven, church, we should be doing that. We should be doing that. And I know I'm not the only one who, who has friends or family members that they're outside the Lord. So be strong and courageous. To finish, you know, Israel, Israel has been crying out to the Lord for years and years and years and years. Because they're slaves in Egypt. Finally, the Lord approaches Moses and, and he said, Okay, I heard my people. Moses, get ready to preach. Get ready to, to get them out of there. Get ready to go and talk to the most powerful men on earth. And Moses said, I don't know about that one. Lord, I, I, I don't know anything. I can't even speak. You know, I'm guilty of that. Sometimes I tell the Lord, I don't know if I am the right man there. And I'm sure that if the Lord talked to me directly, probably he would tell me the same thing. Javier, who formed you? Who created you? I know you way better than you know yourself. So when the Lord is asking us, go and preach. When the Lord is telling us, talk to other people. Church, trust in the Lord. Be strong and courageous and trust in the Lord because he's the one who formed you. He's the one who created you. He's the one who chose you to preach the gospel. This should be our priority, number one. Nothing else, and listen, nothing else will save my family, my friends, my co-workers. Nothing else. Talking about the Seahawks every time that I see my co-workers won't save them. They're not going to go to heaven 
because they know everything about the Seahawks or about whatever we talk about. They're going to go to heaven because they know him. And if I know him, I should be talking about him. So Joshua believed in God. He believed in God. But he also knew God. We have to know God. Let's know God day by day. Let's read his Bible again. This is so important. Pray to him. Read the Bible. There's a, Bi there's a song that says, um, read your Bible and pray every day. You should be doing that, church. And remember, be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Church, we can do so many things for the Lord. But this is for sure. A lot of time, they're not going to go the way we want them to go. I don't know what Max is doing in Tennessee now, but probably he never imagined being there. You never know. When you give your life to the Lord, be ready, because good things are coming. Good things are coming. But you've got to trust in him. My friend, if you're not in the Lord, we, uh, we talk about abiding in him. And one of the ways, the only way that we can abide in him is through baptism. Believe, repent, be baptized. Receive the Lord through baptism, through the waters of baptism. We're ready to help you. And trust me, trust us. That's the best decision that you can make in your life. That's a decision that is going to define eternity for you. So if you know that you need to be baptized, please let us know as we stand and sing the song.